All right, so in this video, we will uh, briefly look at the concept of artificial selection. Um, artificial selection is uh, the opposite of natural selection. So in natural selection, we talked about this video uh, in this, or this picture last time, where you have a giraffe that is taller than the other giraffes. And so the short giraffes that can't reach the leaves will die. The tall giraffe will live, pass on its genes, and so therefore there will be mostly tall giraffes. Um, artificial selection is where humans make the choices. Um, so you, so take domestic dogs, for instance. Um, you have there on the left a wolf that is particularly suited for its environment, able to survive. And on the right, you have a dog that is not suited for any environment other than a living room. Um, and why is that? Well, because we like having dogs in our living rooms. And so we picked out traits that we thought were good and over the course of many years have made uh, useless animals. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, there are many uses for artificial selection. Uh, agriculturally, uh, for instance, uh, you take there on the left, you have corn that is a wild type of corn. Well, over time, we have created corn that is uh, much better for us as far as it produces a lot more fruit it produces a lot more seed it produces a lot more and so we're able to feed ourselves feed our livestock and it's a lot better overall than the uh, wild type on the left and so this is something that has worked uh, through with agriculture uh, industry pretty much everything has uh, we have you know humans have benefited from artificial selection greatly over the years uh, for various reasons <clears throat> now there have been some examples where this has not been a good thing um, you know the you th think of the royal line um, in the, the common now the common choices of royalty in the um, you, you see the years there uh, 16th 17th century Spain um, it was believed that royalty only married royalty uh, that the peasant blood couldn't make its way into the royal family. And so you had a lot of siblings and cousins um, having children together. Um, and if you distill that down to, uh, I mean, I mean, just look at this. You have three families that all result in, it's a family tree that's getting smaller, um, which is just crazy. And, uh, it all distills down to Charles II of Spain, who was, um, you can see, didn't live very long, uh, didn't have, a, you know, wasn't a highly functioning adult, but was the king of Spain. And he was the example of uh, us artificially selecting traits, uh, which is another way of uh, saying inbreeding, uh, which has never been a good thing for anybody because it brings out those bad traits. We'll talk more about this in a later video. Um, so on this too is this idea of convergent evolution. Um, you know, talking about um, some, you know, natural selection creating similar adaptations among different species um, or having similar selective pressures. So it, take, for instance, animals that swim. You have a shark there, which is a fish. You have an ichthyosaur, which is a, pre a prehistoric reptile currently extinct. You have a dolphin that is a mammal, and you have a penguin that is a bird. Uh, four distinct groups of animals, and each one of those groups of animals have um, similar adaptations for the water. They have fins that help them to propel themselves through the water. Uh, penguins, um, I wouldn't call their wings fins, but they function as that. A penguin can swim just as well as a dolphin, and uh, this it's because they have similar shape. Look at them. They're everything shaped the same. Why is that these things are distantly related and that they're all animals? That's about the only thing they have in common. And um, they are all shaped the same because they have similar selection pressures. This idea is called convergent evolution. Um, you see the same thing with flight. Uh, very similar idea with flight, that there are similar kinds of selective pressures um, so you have different sorts of animals that fly you have insects you have birds you have bats 
insects and birds and bats don't even have the same sort of wing structure. You can see a bat there. You can see its its hand is basically its wing, whereas a bird, its whole arm forms its wing. And for bugs, their wings come out of their backs. And so this is a distinctly different kind of wing. However, it still serves the same purpose, allows it to get food better, allows it to escape predation better. And so this is what we mean when we talk about convergent evolution.